Hello YouTube, it's Das Gregor, and welcome to another Gen 2 install tutorial. In the first three parts of installing Gen 2 from another Linux distribution, in my case LFS, we pretty much got everything working and running to the point where we could boot into an empty Gen 2 system. Everything functioned for me. The only error that I found was when I set up my host name, it's now in etsy slash conf.d host name, and I believe I actually set it up in etsy host name instead. When I booted the system for the first time, the host name was a little wonky and I realized my mistake immediately and fixed that. So I hope you guys caught it. I do believe that I did put that in the description of the previous video. In today's video, I hope to get Xorg set up and we will be looking at i3. But really, if you decide you don't want i3, you can substitute your desktop manager, window manager of choice pretty much in that section and just let it install and configure those sections on your own. There'll be a few things you probably wouldn't need, uh, but in this case we're going to be looking at what it takes just to get a basic minimal desktop running i3 for example, which I feel is just awesome. I love i3. Ever since Irish got me onto i3, I just I can't find anything else that I find just as efficient. And it's quick and easy. I like it once you get it configured. <laughs> so without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the command line interface and get started. So here we are at the command line. And what we're going to do, if you remember from my previous uh, tutorials, we set up a script that will ch root us into our Gen 2 partition. So we're going to run Gen 2. And of course, since I've already done some things with my sudoer stuff, it of course already had my password there. So we're in there, and if we do an ls, we will see we are in the Gen 2 partition. Now there's something else we need to do. If we look at the ch final text, we need to do a source slash etsy profile. Now we are root, but sometimes I find that if it gives you an error, you just have to go into root again. It didn't in this case, so we're good to go. And if you wish to set up your prompt so that you know for certain you're in the ch root environment, you can do so with this export command. It's not really necessary, but it's something that you can do if you want. Now I have set up some notes for myself here, things to do to install i3 because really once you get to this point there is no instruction manual you pretty much need to just look for different wikis out there and so if we go to the internet real quick you'll see that we have the i3 wiki and if you look at it it talks about what you need to do to get i3 but it doesn't talk about for instance getting xorg set up so that is one thing that we need to make sure that we're looking at and that's actually the first tab <laughs> that's right here and this is the main one now if you followed part two of the gen 2 tutorial that i created here you have gone through a lot of the kernel and you should have already set up a lot of this stuff for your input your video all your hardware graphic support here this these things should have already been done depending upon what type of hardware but i would suggest you look at the xorg wiki because they do update that constantly in fact i think this has already been updated as of just last month and it will give you a lot of information about getting things set up and all proper now this is another thing in the make.conf you can enter in your input devices your video cards and if you do that it will install a little bit less of the x work because it's going to just install the minimum of what you point but if you're unsure of what you need to have set up here you can just skip this and install the x work without it now this talks about installing uh, the x work drivers 
and it also talks about installing Xorg server. Now, I find that if you do the meta package, you're going to get all of that there already. So this is a good reference, and we're going to ignore the rest of it. <laughs> So we go into here and we want to do an emerge dash AV and we're going to do xorg dash x11 and we will let that process here. Now the xorg x11 is the meta package for the xorg system and you're going to see that we have 104 packages that it needs to install. And if we look at what those packages are, there are a lot of fonts. There's a lot of back-end stuff that needs to be installed, some good resources. You know, I saw XRandar, which is um, your, your desktop, uh, what do you call that? Mine went blank. Resolutions, that sort of thing. XRandar, there we are. You know, a lot of the different tools and things that you need for X11, they're going to get installed with this package here along with some fonts. If we keep going down, you'll then see that it installs the drivers and all the hardware that you'll need. It also installs the Xorg server, which is good because you're going to need that. And so without further ado, we will go ahead and let this start installing. And this may take a little bit of time to complete. So at this point, I will go ahead and pause the video until we get done with it, and we will start with the next stage. So, be right back. Well, it's getting there, about halfway done. And Xorg is now finished. So, everything went smoothly, everything installed properly. We do have one news item that we'll take a quick look at. So I'll do eselect news list. And it has to do with changes in the default video cards. We'll go ahead and read it. So eselect news read 8. Or we could have done a read new. So it's pretty much giving you the new types of video cards that you can use to reflect new chipsets that are out there that may be important to you. In my case, I'm not going to worry about it right now. So in essence, we've got the backbone for our GUI set up. And if we go to our notes, I want to go ahead and also install awesome fonts. So I'll do that. And then we're going to install i3 and i3 status. Now, when I go to install i3 and i3 status, at this point, if you wanted to use XFCE or MATE or LXQT or KDE, GNOME, etc., this is where you choose the meta packages for those and install them instead. In my case, we're going to go ahead and go with i3. So let's get back over to here. We're going to do an emerge, and I believe that it is called Font Awesome. And then we want i3 and i3 status. And we'll see if I have that correct. The following keyword changes are necessary to proceed with font awesome. Okay, that tilde AMD64 means that it is not considered a stable package. In my case, I'm going to go ahead and say yes to set that up. And then we're going to need to do an ETC update. We're going to have to look at that file. And it's just going to add that in there, which is fine for me. So and we're going to say one to replace it. Yes. Now, there's a lot of different things about how the portage items are being used, but real quick, before I move too much further on, we're going to CD into the Etsy portage area. And you'll see that there are directories now for package keywords, package mass, package use, etc. And in regards to this one in the auto unmask area, 
it is going into package keywords. So let's go into package keywords. And I just like to go ahead and call it what it really is. So I'm going to move zz auto to package dot keywords because I tend to do that on my own. Now from now on anytime anything new needs to be added it will add it to package keywords instead of zz auto unmask which is a personal preference. So let's go ahead and get back to root and let's go ahead and bring back up our emerge and I guess that's i3 status without the dash Seventeen package to install for these, so we will go ahead and say yes. And if we look at these use flags real quick, for the most part, you know, the blue of course means that it's not going to install it. Red, it's already set up for that. If we had changed any use flags, they'd be green. And you'll notice that in I3 status we have a minus pulse audio. One thing you may want to consider is if you're going to build with Pulse Audio, you may want to go ahead and change your global use flag in the make.conf to add Pulse Audio. Otherwise, you'll be recompiling this at a later time. At this time, I'm not going to worry about Pulse Audio. I'll deal with it at a later time. <laughs> Just personal preference once again, but something to note. Let's go ahead and say yes. Let that install. I will pause it so you don't have to watch code compile, and we'll be right back. Okay, at this point, we've pretty much got Xorg and i3 installed, bare bones, of course. And if we look at my notes, we've got that this stuff taken care of. We've got these things. Now, without a few extra options in there, it doesn't work well. And what I have found is that we need D menu for us or a menu for applications, Compton for transparency, PN mixer, X screensaver, nitrogen. You know, those are all nice tools to have. And then, of course, uh, for icons, add way to, or however you say that, I don't know. Don't make fun of me. <laughs> And Tactile 3, I really like this particular scheme for my Windows. So we'll go ahead and we'll set up to install those items and get them installing. And then there's some tools that I enjoy, like PC Man FM, Simple Screen Recorder. Uh, Scrot is used for um, screen capture in regards to just taking a picture of your screen. Uh, URXVT for a terminal. Uh, your browser of choice. I like to use QV4, uh, QV4L2, which is actually found in the uh, V4L utils, but you must enable the QT5 use flag for the GUI portion. And that is actually what's given me this. And if we go over to, I think it's page six, and that is this program right here that that runs. You have a lot of control over your camera to set everything up for capturing, and I find it to work really well in Linux. And I've actually started using that a lot more than, say, Cheese or GUVC View, some of those others that are out there. Been very happy with it. So those are some programs. Now, LeafPad, of course, I believe that's like a XFCE type function. With i3, I use a combination of different applications from other uh, uh, desktop managers and so forth so that they work well. The big thing is still creating a slim machine, but using the best of the best tools or whatever you're comfortable with inside of your i3. So we'll go ahead and get uh, DMenu, Compton, PN Mixer, X Screensaver, Nitrogen, those going now. So emerge dash av 
Compton. Ach. D menu, PN mixer. I do not have these things memorized. In fact, there's probably a lot of things on this list that I have forgotten. My goal right now is we're going to get everything set up so that in the next video I'm pretty much recording from the i3 and we'll go through the configurations and things like that from there. And let's see if I didn't mess anything up with that. Okay, so it is dash QT. And 65 more packages to go. That's a lot to install. But everything looks good. So we will go ahead and say yes and let that start. And I will be back again. Okay, and those packages are now compiled. So let's take a look at what we have here. And you may see a few things changed. Um, I added LX Appearance because I remember that I do use that. It's a very lightweight, easy to use uh, portion of LXQT. So we're going to take a look at these programs right here. And I went ahead and wrote out my merge command so I don't have to be bouncing back and forth the way I was in the previous one. But before we go with this, there are some use changes for some use flags that we need to change for the V4L utils and URXVT. So if we go back in here and we do and eQuery U, and I think it's URXVT. I can't remember the name of the package. Let's do a merge dash S. Whenever you don't know the name of a package, I just do a dash S for search, URXVT. In this case, let's see if we can find the right proper package name. So. Those are not looking proper. I'm going to pause real quick while I take a quick look at that. And I believe that it's RxVT Unicode. So if we look at that and do eQuery use for RxVT Unicode, yes, that is the package that we'll be installing. So go back into here. And change this our XVT Unicode. And go back over to here. Now, one thing I have found is it's best to turn on everything <laughs> for the most part here. So we're going to do an echo and we're going to echo out X11. dash terms slash rxvt dash unicode and we're going to add 256 color alt dash font width uh, blink Buffer on clear. Fading colors. Now we only have to worry about things that are in blue because those are disabled by default. The things that are enabled by default have the red. And you can see that, for instance, it's enabled by default, but it's not been built by that because we haven't built anything. Now, we don't have to worry about ISO 1475. We do want pix buff, though. 
and secondary wheel. So I'll add that. I'm not sure about Unicode 3. We're going to hold off on that for now. But we'll do WC with. If I can spell. And might as well do XFT. And then we're going to echo that to which is the arrow arrow slash Etsy portage package use package dot use. And then the other item that we talked about was the V4L utils. And I forgot to put a U for use. So we can look at those use flags. And you notice it only has UDEV and QD, and they're by default already on. So that's great because we don't have to add anything extra for that. So then if we go back over to here and we copy our command paste that into here. One of the benefits of installing Gen 2 from another location. Okay, we have to accept a few things. Simple screen recorder requires that and we have a license agreement that we need to take care of for Google Chrome. Now I know some of you might not like Google Chrome. You can choose whatever browser you like. I have just decided I'm happy with it. It works okay for me. So I'm going to use it. Now because we've done this we need to do an FC update and we're gonna look at the license first since it's number one. Yes it looks all good. I'm going to get out of it and say replace it and add it. Did I say that? Oh, we need to do two now. And yes, we want to add that to our package keywords. So get out of that. And you notice now it's going to add it into package keywords instead of that ZZ thing. So that is fine. Yes, go ahead. And there's nothing else to do. So now if we do our emerge again, we'll find the list of packages. And it has unmet requirements. Let's take a quick look here. The following required use flag constraints are unsatisfied vanilla, alt font width, buffer on clear, secondary wheel. Hmm. The above constraints are a subset of the following complete expression. Vanilla alt font width, buffer on clear, focused urgency, secondary wheel, and the, the bang sign means not. So let me do some quick research. I'll be right back. Okay, well, you know, in the past I've had difficulties with this because it seemed like I had to enable a lot of things, and it's been a long time since I've installed this for Gen 2. And so I just went a little wild enabling all those things. Uh, what we pretty much figured out what I need to do is take out the alt, alt font width, the buffer on clear, secondary wheel, and WC width. And I did that, as you can see, I just kept doing use equals and subtracting things until it finally worked. So what we need to do here is edit our Etsy portage package use package use and we are going to take out the alt font width the buffer on clear secondary wheel and WC width so we're leaving in 256 color blink fading colors pix buff and XFT saving that and now if we go back to our emerge command, you can see all those different ones I tested out. And we run that. We should hopefully get a good emerge setup. And we do. And we're going to take a quick look at things. Most everything's going to be standard. And just a lot of new packages. 
Gen 2 has a lot to compile. And we will look, we have seen no green because we have never installed any of these packages before. If we had installed, for instance, uh, the RxVT and then changed a use flag, we would actually see some of that. But right now, red for is enabled, blue for is disabled, and nothing new. And everything looks good. Another 75 packages. 74 new, one in a new slot. Interesting. The new slot is libusb, which means that it has an other ver another version, but it's going to install a different version as well and keep both of them. So we shall do this and let it go through. I have no clue how long this will take, but it may be a little bit more time than the last ones. So let's go ahead and let it start. And we will come back when it's all done, or if anything crashes, you know, when I'm doing most of these compiles, let me switch over to here. When I do these, if something does crash, I do like to stop and point it out. It might be something you run into and it's good to talk about. If everything goes through and it's successful, then I just move on to the next step and we keep on going. My goal for this video though, is I will get as much as I can think of installed. I will document and talk to you briefly here and there. We're already at 26 minutes about um, things that we're working on. And I hope that once we're done, if you were to reboot then into your Gen 2 and do a Start X, uh, that i3 would at least come up with a bare bones setup. And from that point, in the next video, we'll talk about uh, configuring, and I will try to document as much as possible as we go along so that you're not left, well, I get a partial install sort of thing. But we still have a little bit to go in this video still, but just to let you know. Okay, well, looking at the compiling here, it's doing Boost right now, and Boost is a huge program. It's going to take a while for these 75 packages to go on. So what I'm going to do for right now, uh, before I go, I do want to talk about, um, I am not going to be installing a um, boot up manager, or what do you call that? Where you turn on the computer and it comes to a login screen, and then it goes into your window manager or your desktop manager. Um, I normally always start things with just start X after I've logged in at the command line. So what I'm going to do for right now is show you what you need to do for the .x init RC. And I'm just going to use my LFS to uh, demonstrate what it should look like and explain it a little bit. And then we'll end the video and go into part five eventually very soon. <laughs> So let's see, I've got, let's go to screen 7, let's open up a prompt here, and we're going to edit .xinitrc, because this will pretty much be the same thing that you would um, edit inside of the Gen 2. Now the comments you can ignore. Now the one thing I have here is the xset-dpms and X set S off, that turns off where it blanks the screen on, on me constantly. I don't care for that. I'd rather just use the screensaver to take care of that. Now, if you were using Fay as your background, which we're not, we're actually going to use nitrogen, but if you didn't have nitrogen installed, you could use uh, FEH or Fay to set up your wallpaper. And that's what it does there. And then this is the command line that you're interested in. The exec CK launch session is if you've installed console kit. And if you've installed the dbus launch or dbus, you should use dbus launch. Uh, dbus I know got installed, I believe console kit got installed by default because of the profile that we chose. The dash dash sh dash syntax dash dash exit with session and then lastly i3 
And that is what you want to have in your x your dot x init rc so that once you've logged into the system with your user id you can hit you can type in start x and it should go ahead and give you a blank screen with no configuration set up it may ask you a few questions because it's been a while since i installed i3 from scratch and didn't use any of my already created configurations it may give you an option i believe as to choose what you want to be your meta key i use the alt key some people can use the little windows key others use the function key or control key depending but that is all it really needs set up afterwards most of what we're doing right now is just installing infrastructure uh, files programs that we're going to want to use and I do believe with a little bit of confidence uh, that once these other packages finish you should be able once you've set your .x init RC up to be able to go into this partition and at least start the GUI and it should work if I am mistaken which is always possible I make many mistakes <laughs> I don't claim to be perfect on anything I fumble a lot but if I am mistaken in the next video which I will try to get to sooner than next week you know, we will discuss what I did wrong what we need to fix and go from there so at this point in time let's take a quick look here uh, we're still compiling a lot of stuff actually it looks like it might be inside of SQL light I'm not sure still have a lot to go so if it's morning evening noon or night whatever you're having I hope you enjoy it here's one more little tidbit on getting Gen 2 I hope it works well for you good luck to you and by the end of all of this hopefully you'll have a working setup the way you like it now a lot of this you could probably bypass if you went with the XFCE meta packages or one of the other setups um, if you do decide to do that all you need to do is do a Google search on the .x init RC for XFCE or KDE or GNOME or MATE or whatever you're using and it will tell you how to set up that so that you can do the star X and go forward now if you are interested in some sort of a, a Windows login manager I would suggest at this point in time looking at something very simple such as slim look at the gen 2 slim uh, wiki and it'll go through anything that you want to do so that when you boot up the machine it automatically goes to slim and then goes right into xfce mate kde gnome whatever you're wanting to do i'm not going to be covering that at this time though i'm just trying to keep it simple as simple as gen 2 can be <laughs> thank you and goodbye